So I remember what it was like to be a new believer. And now you want to follow after God and you want to learn his ways and you want to learn all about him. And you're anxious, you're eager to get into the word of God. And you wonder, well, where in the world do I start in reading this Bible? How do I read this Bible? Where do I go? What do I jump into? Do I start in the Old Testament? Should I start in the very beginning in Genesis? Uh, Should I just start in the New Testament and get right into Jesus and his earthly ministry? Should I spend some time in the wisdom books, Proverbs? I heard a lot about the Psalms, heard there's a lot of good stuff in there. Should I start there? Or do I dare go right into Revelation and begin to try to decipher all the imagery and all the symbolism that is in those writings? My advice, what I always say to new believers when I'm trying to help disciple people along is to begin in the Gospels, but but specifically to begin in Luke's Gospel. And the reason why I like to begin in Luke's Gospel is because it flows, there's a smooth transition into the book of Acts. So in Luke's Gospel, He's writing from the perspective of a physician who has um, taken time to hear people's stories that were eyewitnesses of Jesus and his life. And so he has access to them as a companion, a travel companion of the Apostle Paul. So he has access to other apostles, other early believers that were there, that were eyewitnesses of Jesus. And he's taking their stories down and their accounts down. He's compiling them together and giving the best account that he can of Jesus's life and his ministry. And so he's somebody that knows how to study, knows how to interview and knows how to put all these things factually down. And he focuses a lot on the miraculous as you would think a doctor would, right? Somebody who's a physician would be, particularly interested in Jesus's miraculous healings and his power to do things that no physician can. And so Luke's gospel focuses on Jesus's life and his ministry and all of his teachings. And then while Luke comes to an end, it picks directly up with now the ministry of the church. So Acts continues the story by detailing the growth of the early church after Jesus' resurrection and his ascension. So it's a continuous storyline. It's written by the same author. Acts is written by Luke. Luke and Acts were part of a, it's like a two part that was supposed to be, supposed to be read together. Okay. Luke provides a complete account of Jesus' life and Acts picks up right after his ascension, after he promises the gift of the Holy Ghost. He promises his disciples that I'm going to give you power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. And so it shows Jesus' followers continuing in his mission. And it lets us know everything that they did with everything that he taught them. He spent nearly three years with them, about two and a half to three years with them every day, teaching them, teaching them, expounding, revealing the meaning of scriptures to them, breaking things down through all the prophets, through all the law, the Psalms. He says, all of this is speaking about me. And Jesus broke the bread of the word and opened their eyes that they would understand the scriptures. And the book of Acts shows us how the Holy Ghost moved through the church and led them and guided them, guided their steps to go and fulfill the mission that Jesus had for them. And so by reading Luke and Acts in order, you get a more seamless narrative of Jesus's ministry into the birth of the church and what they did with everything that Jesus taught them. And so Luke, when you get to the book of Acts, places a a strong emphasis, a focus on the Holy Ghost moving through the church. We know we cannot do anything without the power of the Holy Ghost. Except the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain, 
Okay, so we can't do anything without the power of the Holy Ghost. So the book of Acts emphasizes over and over. It begins with the Holy Ghost being promised by Jesus. Then in Acts chapter 1, the Holy Ghost is uh, poured out. Or Acts chapter 1 and 2, the Holy Ghost is poured out. And what they do from that day forward. So Luke lays a foundation by expounding everything that Jesus is teaching his life. And it lays a foundation for what the spirit is going to do in the church. Jesus said, he that believeth on me, greater works shall he do. Right. So historical and theological context is going to be found in a, in a theme. It's seamless through Luke's gospel into the book of Acts. And so it tells us his purpose and how his apostles carried out that purpose. So I like to go into that before I get into any other of the epistles or anything else. Because if you just jump straight way into the epistles, it's like reading somebody else's mail, right? You're reading, you're reading the things that they're teaching the churches without the understanding of all the context. You have to see what they did, how they lived their lives, the things that they, the action that they put, the actions that they took, how they obeyed the teaching of Jesus and the things that they commanded people to do, how they raised up churches, how they dealt with uh, converting people in preaching. And then the epistles give more detail into the things they taught. But if you just jump into the epistles without getting into Acts, you're, you're, you're missing the entire foundation. You're, the best way to say it is you're reading somebody else's mail. And so uh, Luke's gospel is rich with all kinds of teaching and parables and insights into Jesus's purpose and message. And then the Acts show how those teaching were lived out how they spread it and it gives context to how Christianity grew and how early believers responded to Jesus's commands. And unless you read Luke into acts, you're going to miss a lot of information about salvation. You're going to get a wrong, you're going to get a wrong idea about salvation. If you just jump into other areas. So this message is for everybody on the, on the first time, The salvation message was ever preached was on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts chapter number two. But we have to start with the foundation of everything that Jesus taught in Luke and then go into the book of Acts first. So the book of Acts also gives a preparation for Paul's letters and Peter's letters. Okay, so Acts describes everything that Paul did or Peter did up to a point And then Luke, who is a companion of Paul, follows along with Paul and gives, uh, he begins to speak in we because he he was there when all this stuff happened. And then it helps set the stage for Paul's letters to the Romans, the Corinthians, the Ephesians, Philippians, Galatians, those in Thessalonica. Once you get a view of what they actually did, then those epistles begin to make sense. When you get a view of the things that he preached and the way that they live their life, then you get a better understanding of the things that he is writing about in the epistles. And so if you are a new believer, the message through Luke into the book of Acts, I believe is your best foundation before you get into other parts of the Bible. And then you can go back and forth through other, other gospels, Matthew, Mark, Uh, and John and get fill in some blanks and get other points of view on things that were happening in the book of Luke or got Luke's gospel. But Luke into acts. That's that to me is, is the, the easiest foundation upon which to understand the rest of the new Testament. 